Welcome to this video continuation on chapter one's coverage of molecules and numbers. In this video, I will teach you about density and specifically how to use it to interconvert between mass and volume. So the way to interconvert between mass and volume is by using density. Strictly speaking, density is mass divided by volume. Oftentimes we're given problems that provide a substance's density and then require us to use it to interconvert between mass, volume, or other terms. The best way to teach this then is to look at an example. Osmium has the density shown here. What volume then in cubic centimeters would be occupied by a 45.2 gram sample of osmium? Now at this point I invite you to pause the video and attempt to do this on your own using the skills that we learned in our dimensional analysis video earlier on. Then if you want, you can press play and watch me show you how to solve it on the board. To try to keep this uh, question a little bit simpler than the way it's originally worded, I just extracted out from the question the key pieces of information. It tells me that the sample of osmium has a density shown here, grams per cubic centimeter, and that we have a specific amount of osmium, 45.2 grams. It then asks us what volume would this 45.2 grams of osmium occupy in cubic centimeters. Do you follow? Now, anytime you're given a bunch of stuff like this and you're asked to convert it into some other answer that has you know, specific units, in this case, cubic centimeters, that should be a dead giveaway that it is a dimensional analysis slash unit conversion question. In order to do that, we follow the exact same steps that I've done in unit conversion in the past as outlined in an earlier video that I've linked to below, okay? Step one is we look at our terms and pick one that we've been given. Now, sometimes we have problems like this where we have more than one term. So what do I do there? Well, one of the things that I always, always do in this situation is I look for a term that has no denominator units. There are some exceptions, but they're rare. Most of the time, if you have multiple terms, the one you're gonna wanna start with in order to do your journey of conversion is the one that has no denominator units where possible. Occasionally, that isn't possible, but most of the time it is, especially when you're given multiple values like this. So you'll notice that here I've got 22.6 grams per cubic centimeter. The cubic centimeter here is below a fraction. This, this horizontal or kind of slanty vertical line represents a unit in a denominator. You see it's in the bottom of a fraction. This term has denominator units, so I'm not going to start with that. But the other term, 45.2 grams, that has no denominator units. This isn't grams per something. It's just grams. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to write down 45.2 grams. You see that? And the next step is write down a set of parentheses to the right of the value you just wrote down. Now we go on to step three, which is start writing down units in your parentheses that will cancel out the units you began with and eventually arrive at the destination units, that is the units that your answer should have. What units should our final answer have? Well, as we read in the question, it asks us for a volume in these units, cubic centimeters. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I want to do some type of unit manipulation, canceling out this unit of grams to eventually arrive at an answer that has cubic centimeters. So that's where I want to go. Okay. So what units am I going to have here in the set of parentheses? Well, my tactic is almost always to put the units here in the bottom that will cancel out the units in the top. In other words, the units here in the set of parentheses here is going to be in the denominator the same as the units that were in the numerator of the preceding term. So I've got grams up top, which means I'm gonna have grams down bottom. Now, based on the information I've been given in this problem, is there any other terms? So we've used the 45.2 grams, so we can't use it twice. I'm just gonna check that off. It's used. Is there any other term that we've been given that has grams anywhere in it? Yes, there is. It's this one up here. It has grams per centimeter, or per cubic centimeter. So is it possible to flip that and say, if I say that 22.6 grams of this substance is present in one cubic centimeter, could I flip that and say that one cubic centimeter also contains 22.6 grams? In other words, could I flip this around and put my grams in the bottom? Absolutely you can. See, a parenthesis is just a statement of fact. It's saying that the thing on the top equals the thing on the bottom when you're given a parenthesis in this type of dimensional analysis, unit analysis, conversion kind of problems. Man, that is a tongue twister. Anyway, so I've got grams here in the bottom. In this particular problem, given the information I've been provided, can I directly relate grams to cubic centimeter? The answer is yes, because I've been given a value that has grams and cubic centimeter connected to each other. Now, if you're just walking around in the woods or something and you want to directly relate grams to cubic centimeter just out in the wild or something, that's not really easy to do directly. But if you're given a term or you measure a term that, that uh, has a density, then you can. This is an important thing. You'll notice that density is the intermediary 
mathematically between mass and volume. So if I want to convert a mass to a volume, I go through density. It's the intermediary. If I want to go from volume back to mass, I go through density. And that's what the purpose of this problem and this video is. Does that make sense? So now that I've done that, that ends our step three. Step four is insert my numbers wherever they go, being sure to put them in the right location. Now, I know this might seem a stretch, but you see this says 22.6 grams, and it, even though there's not a one in the denominator written, it's kind of implied. So I'm gonna erase the cubic centimeter and just add a one. It's saying the same thing. What I'm saying is that if it tells me that there's 22.6 grams per cubic centimeter, it's the same thing as saying 22.6 grams per one cubic centimeter. In other words, if I have one cubic centimeter, so I, so I can add that one. Hopefully you're okay with that, okay? Keeping that in mind, let's put our numbers down. You'll notice that the 22.6 is next to the grams. So when I go down here to my uh, lineup here, I'm gonna put down the 22.6 next to the grams. And on top, I'm going to put a one. Does that make sense? Totally implied there, even though it didn't specifically say the one. So I'm now done with step four. Step five is multiply this crap out on your calculator, which I did earlier and conveniently found that the answer is exactly two. I mean, it's exactly two, 45.2 divided by 22.6. It's kind of cool to me because I uh, sort of made this problem up myself and I picked this number out of the air and it turned out to be an exact whole number answer. That was kind of fun. <laughs> anyway, and then step six is make sure to round your answer however you need to in order to follow the significant figure rules, which I outlined in an earlier video linked to below. Okay, so this is a division problem. I'm taking a term and dividing it by another term, these two numbers. So the division multiplication rule says that we need to round our final answer to have the same number of sig figs as whichever value or number had the smallest number of sig figs. How many sig figs did this have? Yeah, it has three, one, two, three. There's three integers here, and according to our sig fig rules, again, you can watch the earlier video linked to below, that has three sig figs. So I'll just write a three there. How many sig figs does this have? Yeah, it has three. Now you might go up here and say, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Doesn't that just have one sig fig? The answer is yes, but please keep in mind that the number that really is the limitation of sig figs is the number that has decimals that presumably was measured. Okay, what we're gonna assume is that this is actually representative of 1.0000000 cubic centimeters. So this wasn't the, the limitation. The limitation of measurement was this thing, okay? So anytime you see that and you see the decimally one, the decimally one is usually the one that I focus on to, in order to pick my number of significant figures. Hopefully you're okay with that. I assume that this term actually has theoretically infinite significant figures because I'm saying that there's 22.6 in 1.0000 and on and on and on cubic centimeters. And the limitation of my instrument that measured that 22.6 was here at the 22.6, not up here with the one. Okay, with all of that said, I need to therefore round my final answer to have three significant figures. Now my answer is exactly two. How do I rewrite that to have three significant figures? I just put two zeros to the right of the decimal. According to our sig fig rules, zeros that are to the right of a decimal actually do count as significant because they convey to the reader that your instrument was accurate enough to measure out to that many decimals without any error, okay? So this is the final answer to the question, and this hopefully illustrates clearly how we use density as an intermediary to interconvert between mass and volume.